If you only had a few minutes to get started with Google Docs, then this would be the video to watch. So think of it as a kind of quick start video. There's more detail to come on other occasions, but for now, let's just crack on and do the obvious stuff. So let me just create a brand new blank document from the Docs home screen. And sure enough, here's the piece of paper that I'm going to be typing on. And there's my cursor blinking, ready for me to start typing. But I'd like to zoom in a little bit because I don't feel like it's optimizing the space I've got available on the screen. So the default zoom is 100%, but let me change that to fit. And at first glance, that doesn't appear to make much difference. But let me just hide that document outline. There we go. That's optimizing my screen better. And I'm going to start typing in a heading. So I want this to be company news. But notice, I'm going to type it in with a mistake. So there we go. I put an M instead of an N there for company. But as I press the space bar, can you see it automatically corrected it for me? And those little dots are a subtle way of saying, hey, user, I've made an automatic correction here. Let's just check we've got that right. And I can go ahead and click on that and undo it if it didn't get it right. But if it did get it right, I can just ignore it and keep typing. I'm going to paste in some other text that I've already got on my clipboard to save you having to watch me uh, type in a whole page of text there. And what you'll notice is that spelling mistakes are indicated with a red wiggly underline and grammatical errors with blue wiggly underline. Now, many of these will have been corrected as you type them in, a bit like we saw with company up there. But let's say you paste in some text from somewhere else. You might well bring some mistakes with you. And if that's the case, then you can go on to these and just click and you'll see you get this little floating toolbar, which suggests suggests a correction for you or you could have gone ahead and said no please ignore that that's not what I wanted or if you're more of a right clicking sort of person you could have right clicked on that to see a slightly more expansive description there now if you've got lots of mistakes in your document you might not want to go through them one at a time well you don't have to there is of course a spell check option so look up on your toolbar towards the left hand side you've got the little a with a check mark there that's the spelling and grammar checks if you choose that it'll go through all of the rest of the mistakes so sure enough I do want to change team to team or I could ignore it if that wasn't something I wanted to change but let me just click accept and accept again there's another grammatical one perfect and that one too brilliant the document is indeed looking good just one more spell checky thing to mention though I'm going to paste in another little bit of text here and you'll see there's another spelling error and it thinks that I've spelt the word monitor wrong now if I just right click on that and I can say yes please always correct that to monitor spelt that way but actually let's imagine that this is a word of a particular unique thing <laughs> I don't want it corrected that is actually what I wanted to type so I could add it to the dictionary and that means it now knows that that's a correct word and it'll correct things to that in the future but if you go to the tools menu and choose spelling and grammar and have a look at your personal dictionary that's where you can see that's the word we have just added to the dictionary and if you're just playing along with me and you don't really want that word added you can see there's a little trash can there to remove that from the dictionary now suppose before we go much further we should talk about saving the document so look up at the top left hand corner this is an untitled document and if I click in there I want to give it a name well it's going to pick up what it thinks might be a suitable name which is the title of this document here I think that'll do just nicely but you could of course type in whatever you wanted to there let me just press enter to accept that and that's it. You don't have to worry about saving any more. Changes are automatically being saved into your Google Drive. And we will talk more about moving that into a particular location or downloading it another time. When it comes to applying some formatting to your text, well, as you might imagine, you can just click and drag to select the text and then use the buttons. So make it bold, italics, underlined. Oh, let's make it a bit bigger. Let's change the font style. You get the idea. So it's all of the usual sorts of things that you would expect. If I wanted to make that centered on the page, then again, I can choose the alignment options over here or maybe down here. I want to add some bullets. So let's select the text and choose. Oh, what should we choose? So quite a few different bullet styles. Let's choose. Oh, the arrows there quite like that and maybe this should be a little heading as well so I'm going to make that bold and italics and maybe even a different color as well let's choose oh let's choose orange very nice when it comes to moving text around you could click and drag to move things around it can get a bit fiddly though but if you wanted to do it that way you can click and drag to select the text you want to move and then click in the middle and then drag it to the new location 
Sometimes people do get in a pickle with that though when you let go at just the wrong time. But look at the left hand end of your toolbar. There is an undo button and actually you can keep on stepping back. You can undo lots of steps. So that's always a bit of a lifesaver. And if you undo too far, so I've just undone the formatting I applied to that news flash heading, then you can redo to step forward just to the right point in time. So you can move things around in that way, but I personally prefer to cut and paste things. So if I want to move this paragraph to the end of my document, I'm going to select it. I'm going to choose Control X to cut it and then click in the gap there and then Control V to paste it. So I think those keyboard shortcuts are pretty universal. But if you go to the edit menu, just to remind yourself, there's the cut, copy and paste shortcut there and of course don't forget if you copy something so let me just grab that little newsflash heading and again I'm just going to choose a control C and put it as a little heading for each paragraph then of course it will be remembered so it stays on your clipboard until you overwrite it with something else Let's just pop in a quick table because I think no document is complete without a nice table of information. So if you go to your insert menu and choose table and then basically you click and drag to specify the dimensions of the table that you want. So let's say I want three columns but just two rows. In it goes. You can obviously start typing and use your tab key to navigate to the different cells. And then when you get to the end of the table, if you want another row, just keep on tabbing and it will give you a new row. Now, obviously, there is more to learn about all of this. But in terms of a quick start, we haven't done so badly. We've got some text in there. It's spell checked. We've done some basic formatting and we popped in a table. In the next video, let's look in a bit more detail at what else we can do with our text.